your, your town, your own home, and tear your family asunder, taking you in deplorable conditions in the belly of ships across the ocean. Some survived, some did not. And then they got sold to the highest bidder, separated for the rest of their days. Do you not think Spirit was having a fit about that? And that is why President Abraham Lincoln had seances in the White House. Years ago, Ron and I took a trip with the boys to Washington, D.C., and of course had to do all the tourist things. That's why you go to Washington, D.C., to see your government in action and all these th buildings and places and people we hear about never get to see. We did the tour of the White House, and our tour guide was a nice young woman, and we said, you know, this has just been great, but tell us about the seance room. She said, we're not allowed to talk about that. <laughs> now, we have a wonderful book in our bookstore about the psychic life of Abraham Lincoln. And if you've not already read it, I would strongly recommend that you do. Because this has been floating around for years. Did they have seances in the White House? Well, spiritualists have always said, yes, of course they did. But now... The documents have been researched. Yes, they did have seances in the White House. President Lincoln and his wife, Mary Todd Lincoln, had lost a son. He had made his transition. And the mother was so devastated, as any mother would be. She was so grief-stricken. She had heard about spiritualism and they prove that life continues. I can only imagine the conversation. Honey, I know you're the president of our country, but I want to know our son lives. Well, President Abraham Lincoln invited some of the most powerful people of the day to attend seances in the White House. Did you know that President Lincoln himself would retreat to a darkened room and sit in a rocking chair, and he had a favorite beat-up old wooden shawl, a woolen shawl that he would wrap around him? And those that saw him preparing to do this would see one eye roll up. He was going into trance, and he received wonderful spirit communication. He knew there was this great unrest in the land because of slavery. Now, we look at politicians nowadays, and we get pretty aggravated at times because it appears they will do or avoid doing most anything to be popular. And even in those days, President Lincoln's advisors were saying, you can't be telling people that you are having seances. You can't be telling people that this young woman who had been an invalid all her life, Nettie Colburn, sorry, Nettie Maynard Colburn, you can't be telling people that this young girl comes and we do seances, we sit in circles, and she brings information, not only about family and friends, but things of national significance. We cannot tell people that occasionally just you and your cabinet will sit with this young woman to receive divine inspiration. They'll think you're crazy. <coughs> he was so crazy 
that he emancipated the people. That was spirit and divine intervention, people. He deliberately took time to communicate with spirit himself and through this young woman medium. He was seeking that higher knowledge, that higher understanding, that divine guidance, so that he could do all of these things for the betterment of humanity. It made him pretty unpopular. Terrible things were said about him, they were written about him, and ultimately he was assassinated. But he did the draft of the Emancipation Proclamation through divine contact, through inspiration from the world of spirit. And then he pushed hard for his Congress, for all of the political leaders around him to accept this and make it law. Now, why am I telling you all this? I know you had history in school. Maybe you enjoyed it more than I did. I hope for your sake so. My point to all of this is, these are just two examples of life-changing events that didn't happen in the blink of an eye, of course not. But if these life-changing events affecting an entire nation could be brought about by divine guidance, by spiritual contact, Aren't we beginning to feel a little bit silly? Aren't we beginning to question? Gee, and I was just worried if I had enough gas in the car to make it to church this morning. People get so caught up in wanting a message, they sometimes miss the message. The message is that we are here for a higher purpose. We are here to do things in our world that will make it better. No, you don't have to go lobby Congress. You don't necessarily have to carry banners and wave signs. 